Good morning, welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 23rd of March and this quick look at the week ahead, the 26th of March and I think events for the coming week are going to be likely overshadowed by the events of this week, namely the escalation um, between the United States and China and the trade dispute currently playing out between the two. Now, uh, currently as it stands, as I record this video, we have had President Trump announce $60 billion worth of tariffs on Chinese trade and investment, and they will be 25% tariffs. Um, China has inevitably pushed back on that, um, but I think what has struck me by their response has been the fact that they've really only pushed back to the tune of $3 billion. So that would suggest to me that ultimately, while um, they are concerned about this escalation, they still see room for manoeuvre and still see room for negotiation. And I think one of the criticisms that has been levelled at the United States has been the fact that ultimately, while they know what they don't like, they haven't really stated what they want from China They've asked China for solutions without really, I think, outlining um, what they're totally unhappy with. So um, we've seen a massive decline in equity markets this morning what, or, and, and this week. And uh, what struck me, I think, more than anything else is the fact that um, while equity markets have taken the strain of this increase in trade tensions, currency markets haven't as yet. Um, the dollar index is still pretty much off the lows that we saw in the wake of the February rout in stock markets. And while some indices have, um, have performed worse than others, namely the FTSE 100, which has taken out its February lows, the European indices still remain above their February lows, notably the German DAX, which we're looking at right now. And we can see on this chart here, it's a, it's a daily chart candle chart currently trading above the 11,850 level we do appear to be on the cusp of rolling over but this this series of lows between 11,690 and 11,850 I think are very very important levels in the wider scheme of things we have posted a death cross where the 50 day moving average is crossed below the 200 day moving average we've also seen similar patterns play out on the other main benchmark indices here in Europe. What we haven't seen is them play out in the US. And I think if we look at, say, for example, the FTSE 100, which has borne the brunt of the sell-off um, over the course of the past few weeks, we can see that we've moved well below the 7,000 level. We're now below um, the 6,900 level, but we are closing in on a very, very key support level in the form of the 200-week moving average. If we look at this chart here, um, in particular, we can see that over the course of the last few years, the 200-week moving average has acted as a very decent area of support um, for um, a number of declines while the market has been above it. So that suggests to me that um, it is likely to play a key role in the event that the FTSE 100 goes down there and retests it. And that particular level, we can see that on this chart here, it's round about the 6,800 area, just about the 6,835, 6,840. So worth keeping an eye out for that particular um, index, these, the 200-week the moving average. This is the daily chart. We can see here that um, we've posted significant number of days of declines here so there is there is a it is not inconceivable we could see a little bit of profit taking in and around these sorts of levels so that's sort of the overview of where we are at the moment and the key support levels um, for the key benchmark indices let's have a quick look at the S&P 500 to to give the US angle and we can see here that again we're above the February lows and once again there's potential that we could close in on the 200-day moving average, which held on the downside in February. And that comes in just below 2,600, around about 2,590 there or thereabouts. Okay, so looking ahead, as we head into Easter, we've got a four-day week next week. Um, we've had the Federal Reserve meeting this week in the Bank of England outlook, and it's clear to me that 
central bankers want to keep the prospect of further tightening, further rate rises on the table. We saw that at this week's Bank of England meeting with two dissenters to the decision to keep rates unchanged. And we also saw that with the Federal Reserve, where the dot plot charts for 2019 um, were predicting an additional rate rise in 2019, while keeping the prospect of three rate rises in 2018 unchanged. Certainly hasn't affected the dollar. The dollar has still remained under pressure. But what is significant is that despite the dollar remaining under pressure, most of the strain has come in the form of the dollar yen chart, whereby we've broken below those lows that we saw in February around about 105.20. So I think unless unless we run the risk of a further move lower to around about 103, 104.30 and then 103, we need to get back above 105.40, 105.50 to stabilize on dollar yen and now that we are below that. The key things that I'm keeping out for this week, we're fairly light in the coming week, we're fairly light on data. It's US fourth quarter GDP, the final numbers there, and UK fourth quarter GDP as well. Um, we're expecting an around about a figure in the region of around about 1.4% annualized for US GDP. UK GDP, similar sort of um, annualized numbers around about 1.7, as well. And on a, on a quarterly basis, we're looking at around about 0.3 or 0.4. On the earnings front, again, it's a fairly light calendar. We've got full year results for Labrook's Coral Group on the 27th of March with recent publicity about a crackdown on betting terminals um, weighing on the share price of that particular sector. Labrooks Coral has by and large been fairly immune to that because of its large sports betting business. And the fact is that the regulator has suggested that the um, that there, there should be a watering down of proposals on fixed odd betting terminals. So that may well give the numbers there a decent lift. We've also got AJ, AG Bar, four-year earnings, makers of Iron Brew um, on the 27th. We've got Monsanto, second quarter. Um, the EU ha appears to have given the green light to um, that particular tie-up with Germany's buyer. Now it needs to get past US regulators, so there's still an awful lot of uncertainty there. And then we've also got Walgreens Boots second quarter earnings on the 28th. So that's it for today um, and this week. Um, thanks very much for listening. This is Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.